Welcome pilots, my name is Hybrid V, and we are back once again to watch your takeoff and landings here at Grimhex. Yes, everybody's favorite hive of scum and villainy, and immediately we have two customers getting ready for what appears to be taking off here. You can see I'm in EVA, and the reason why is I'm just not using my Fury today, because this is all the hangers we get at Grimhex, and it's all you really need. Side-on hangers, which is awesome, and Zero-G. Here we go, first customer of the day, we have a Redeemer taking off, gear is now coming up. A beautiful pushing out. Actually, the gear is still down, I saw there. I could just see uh, the nose as it passed over and the gear was still down. So a little bit of a late retraction on that gear. Nice takeoff overall. Loud, no, no hesitation. So I will give that a decent. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Overall good. That gear, mm, got to ding it for the gear. And now we have a Corsair taking up here. Looking good. Gear is already up. However, I don't see the VTOLs active. Again, you don't really need it necessarily at Grimex because you're going to go straight into 0G. Actually, no, Vital is active. Look at that. Oh, goodness. That is awesome. And it, away she goes. Look at that. <laughs> yes, I'm a bit in the splash zone here, folks. Uh, that is the price I'm going to pay. I do it for you because you all enjoy watching these takeoff and landings. And if I can get as close as I possibly can to watch people come and go, then I really will try to put myself out there. And of course, eh, it's Grim Hex. What else is going to matter, right? I'm just going to be a Another splat on someone else's windshield. Who cares? <laughs> I do this for you folks, all right? There's a medical facility here. If I die, all my gear goes here anyway, so somebody will run me over. And of course, we don't have an actual comma right here, so nobody's going to get in trouble. So even if I do get splat, it's really no big deal. So in the splash zone, I wait. All right. Nice two outings from there. That Corsair surprised me because originally I thought it didn't have... It's VTOLs active, but actually the owner decided to use the VTOLs. Again, you don't need to use the VTOLs, especially because you're just going to be in the actual hangar taking off and then pushing out, and you really don't need it the entire time, but it looks cool. Remember, what we are looking for here, folks, is cinematic takeoff and landing, stuff we would see like in Star Wars or even some of the cinematic stuff you see CAG puts out, right? We want to have nice, smooth control takeoffs, and then when we land nice and smooth coming in, Gear down right before you touch down. It has to be all nice and smooth. And of course, deployment of VTOLs because it looks cool. The rule of cool is what we're judging on here. That Redeemer, like I said earlier, had a late gear up because I, initially I thought it had its gear up, but then I noticed as the nose passed that the little shell, the clamshell for the gear was still open. So I'm subtracting points for that. And then of course we have the Corsair there. Phenomenal. It lifted up and then held itself up, had VTOLs active and geared up and then pushed out. That is a straight 10 out of 10 takeoff. That's what we're looking for. Lift up gear up make sure you have your VTOLs active as well too so you look good and then you push on out and then you straighten the VTOLs out once you're into zero g all right but i'm going to give that corsair a 9 out of 10 and the only reason why i'm giving them a 9 instead of a 10 is because they didn't cycle their wing configuration properly as they were taking off it's really the only thing i could write home about that was a negative on that everything else was phenomenal almost a 10 out of 10 just got to get that wing configuration set up all right let's move on all right, we got another hangar opening up here. Grimhex is really, really slow. And uh, so I've been here for quite a while. That's why you can see the light is actually here. I've been sitting here for about 30 minutes now, and there's been nothing going on. That's just the nature of Grimhex. People don't like coming here. And uh, regardless of that, we have people who do want to come and take off and land. And here we have this customer here, a C2 taking off. No VTOL active. You can see the little flappy wings are not engaged yet there. I can't quite see the gear deployment here because I'm a little too high up and I don't want to get in their way, but yeah, no, no VTOL deployment. Although, like I said, it doesn't really matter, but we are going to take points away from that. And it is part of the scoring here. And uh, let's go ahead and watch him as he takes off. Looks like he's going to line himself up as to, to go somewhere here. I do like watching the bigger ships take off in quantum because you can physically see them move. And I can't wait to see the new quantum stuff, the new vi visual effects and the new way they engage. It's going to be incredible. So, uh, you know, it's going to be cool seeing this method, this old system here. You're going to see he just kind of moves off into the distance at high speed. Uh, in the future, that's all going to change. We're going to have like really beautiful visual effects that accompany it, new sound effects and design, new mechanics. And, like, boop, there he goes, off he goes. But eventually, that's going to be so much cooler, and I cannot wait. Yeah, overall, really cool there. I could not see gear deployment, though, so I can't give a full score there. I was thinking about trying to get, you know, a little bit further down so I could see a little bit better, but I didn't want to get splat by this person because I had no idea what their intention was, whether they were going to zoom out or not. Um, so ultimately, I'm just not going to give that person a score. However, I will mention the fact that they didn't have VTOLs active, so if I were to score it, I would take points away from that. Like I said, again, it doesn't matter, but part of what we're grading here is the cinematic aspect. All right, let's move on. Okay, I hear something behind me. Uh, I don't see a hangar opening up yet. Oh, here he is. This is the person that I heard. <laughs> we have a vulture coming in. 
Like I mentioned in the past before in previous episodes, the Vulture is a little bit cursed, though recently we've had pretty good Vulture takes so far. And I don't see the VTOLs active on the Vulture, which is fine. I mean, if you want to, uh, you know, do a cinematic landing at Grimhex, you want to do your VTOLs and your gear deployment when you're in the hangar because they, there's an air shield there and you have gravity. So that's the best place to do it where it makes sense. This person has a bit of an early gear deployment there. Which is unfortunate and we'll have to subtract points for that and they are descending very nicely nice and gentle looking good they're lining it up and touchdown that's a nice gentle like it looks like an accelerated limited uh landing uh i'm actually going to talk about that later at the end of the video there's a different type of landing called the acceleration limited landing and uh we'll talk about that in the later that kind of almost looks like what that was uh the way how it just that person kind of linearly dropped down onto the deck like that uh, but yeah, overall, I think that was really good, really solid. The main thing I don't like, though, was there's a bit of hesitation holding up in front of the pads there. Remember, everything has to be done in one smooth motion. You don't want to block the uh, the kind of airspace there, so to speak, so that way you're not a threat to anybody else getting in the way or whatever. And also uh, a slight hesitation as they came in, but overall, very nice. I will subtract some points for the hesitation in gear, though. So I will say that's a 7 out of 10. Very nice. Also nice and centered, though. I will give them that. So very, very good. All right, I hear something nearby. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, something is definitely on the way over, or at least passing by. I heard something. And, uh, yeah, I can't see anything. Uh, but anyway, on that... Oh, hey, we've got a hangar opening up here. What have we got here? We have a Cutlass Blue with the Foundation Festival paint on it, looking wonderful. we got a Bounty Hunter, potentially, right? Looks like they might be uh, taking off looking for some targets here. Lights are on. Lifting up, gear up, that's good. No VTOL activation, though. I would like to see some VTOL activation, just because it looks cool when you're lifting up. You can turn the VTOLs once you push out and head out of your way. Also, there's a little bit of hesitation leaving the hangar there, but overall looking good, and off they go. They got their lights on, too, so of course you can see those beautiful blue and red lights go on as they make their way off to go hunt some uh, bounties or whatever it is they could be looking for. Maybe they're looking for players, don't know. But yeah, overall, you may notice uh, that I am going to be critiquing things a little bit more harshly this time, especially with my scores. Uh, some of you have expressed in the previous comments uh, that I'm a little too generous or that you feel like I'm a little too generous. Fair enough. Uh, I could take that feedback if you guys feel I'm a little too generous. I normally think that as long as you land, you don't blow up in the process. I think that's perfectly fine and it's serviceable, but we are looking for cinematic landings here. And if you guys don't think that my grading matches the cinematic nature of those landings, then sure, we can be a little bit more harsh on that. So I am going to be a little bit more stricter on my gradings here and give a little bit more dings where they're deserved. All right, let's move on. Okay, we got a small hangar opening up here. We have a Titan doing a bit of a mail slot takeoff here. Gear is still down, though, unfortunately. Now, I do like the mail slot takeoff. As Are they dropping chat? Yeah, they are. <coughs> oh, gosh, they dropped chaff everywhere. Oh, no, that was this Cutlass coming in. So you see this uh, Avenger Titan still got their gear down, unfortunately, and there's that chaff still being dropped, I think, by the Cutlass. Could be that this person is being chased by a bounty. After all, Grimhex is the place to go if you're a criminal here. Uh, early gear deployment from that Cutlass, no VTOL activation, and slightly offset on the pad. I don't mind it being slightly offset. Hey, it's Grimhex. Who cares, right? Who's going to honestly check? But the gear deployment and the lack of VTOLs does take away from that cinematic aspect. For that Titan, though, <laughs> gear is still down on the Titan over there as he's about to... Uh, zip out into quantum uh, overall a nice takeoff mail slot land i'll give them a couple points for that but ultimately that gear deployment still being there they left the gear down the entire time it just ruins that experience off they go it just completely ruins it so i will give them an 8 out of 10 overall really really cool mail slot takeoff but that gear mm, not good cutlass on the other hand way too early gear deployment no use of vtol activation and a little bit offset on the pad so i'm going to give them ooh. There's a lot of elements missing there. I could give them an 8, but definitely don't deserve an 8. That's more of a 7. It's good, but it's not what we're looking for. It's closer to a 6, but I'll give them a 7. I am still going to be a little bit generous. I'm hearing something off in the distance. It's very faint. Now, you might not hear it. I'm going to try to up things in post as best I can. But uh, I have my audio cranked up really high, so the audio sim is feeding in sounds of thrusters nearby. And I'm not entirely certain if something else is out there. I can't quite hear it. By the way, you can see the shadows rolling along the rocks here. I love these dynamic shadows. They look really cool. Although there's a mixture of two types of like shadows that you'll see here. There's a, like a runtime probe that kind of does these like stutter steps. There it goes right there. See, that is the runtime probe adjusting based on where the sun's position is. 
So that's kind of like a performance saving thing CIG does. So not all shadows you'll see are dynamic. So you can see like that shadow right there is a dynamic shadow, right? But that costs a little bit more system resources to kind of constantly calculate over and over. So some areas of the game world actually use runtime probes. And that's why you saw how the uh, light skipped for a second there. And that is just the runtime probe just kind of generating a new, uh, I don't know the exact terminology for it, but basically it's just adjusting shadows and lighting based on the new position. And they do these kind of stutter step patterns. And that's just to save resources and to ensure that the game runs at a consistently good frame rate as much as it possibly can. I mean, it's Star Citizen at the end of the day. It's just one of those weird little things you see when you're just kind of sitting out here in the wild on your own alone with no one else to talk to anyway let's go find the next customer shall we oh a little bit late on the recording here i mean like i said folks a lot of time passes in between here so i'll end up be watching something off screen or watching something on my tablet in front of me here and then i'll just completely miss when people take off and land because there's just so much downtime in between takeoff and landings people here just don't like coming to grim Hex, and it makes sense it's one of the more like well-known PVP areas that also is where criminals like to hang out, actual criminals, you know, people with crime stats and whatnot. So coming here, people don't really have an incentive if you're lawful, unless you're doing some kind of trading or you need to get some type of specific equipment. And you can see here, this pilot here took off. They did everything correct. They got up, lifted up, geared up, and then pushed out. But then now they're just hesitating because they're probably inputting something in the star map. There, you can also see that the pilot is naked. Uh, so this person is uh, in their, you know, natural flight suit, <laughs> as it were. So this person is probably just transiting from one place to another. I don't know if they have a crime set or not. Kind of irrelevant at the point, but it is kind of funny. Uh, you'll see a lot, a lot. Oh, there he goes. Off he goes. Oh, nice barrel roll. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving us a show there. Overall, that was a fantastic, fantastic. I'll give them a 9 out of 10. The only thing I will give them on and ding them on is that hesitation at the hangar and just kind of holding things up just to put information into their star map. A lot of people tend to do that. I've seen many collisions as a result. Not any here on the show yet so far, but definitely when I'm out in the wild, I've seen people collide with other players who are just stationary because they're sitting there probably trying to fiddle with their inventory or fiddle with their Moby glass. So yeah, I generally try to discourage that as much as I can by trying to ding points on that with the cinematic nature of it, right? And also, it's just always funny seeing people flying their ships in their medical gown or just naked like that other person was. Very common, I'm sure. I mean, if you're doing a lot of PvP, there's no need to put on equipment. Just go in your medical gown, right? It doesn't matter. Eventually, it's going to change. Okay, what do we got here? We have one of the bigger hangars opening up, and it appears to be empty, so someone is coming in for landing. Ah, uh, who could that be? Now, one of the interesting things about Grim Hex is it can take people quite a while to find the hangar here and i'm hoping that's not going to be the case this time around we shall see uh, i don't hear anything coming in just yet nor do i see anything i'm trying my best here to see if i see engine trails or anything coming in oh oh there they are oh i think they just collided with a rock up there yes they did they collided with a rock you can see the trails of debris coming from the back end of this C2 as it's coming into land. This person was taking quite a while finding their way to the hangars. They must have got lost trying to figure out which way they needed to go. And you can see all that debris just spewing at the back where the tail section of the ship was. Looks like they smashed it off and just broke it off completely as they were coming in at high speed. Looks like they hit a rock, a small rock or something on the way in. That's unfortunate. Unfortunately, you guys, you know, collisions of any kind, we always subtract points, even if they're not even close. Oh my goodness, they immediately bash the left wing into the side of the hangar as they come in. Gear deployment's really early. You can see sparks flying everywhere. It's just a madhouse as this person is trying their darndest to try to get themselves well aligned there, just bashing the nose into the front as they come in a little too hot there as well, too. Now they're trying to recenter themselves there, and they just... They're just bouncing all over the place like a ping pong, and then they don't even center it. They don't even center it. They're just like, all right, good enough. I'm good. See, folks, this is why I advocate using VTOLs on the C2, because you tuck your little wings in, right? Not going to say that that would have saved this person there. It looks like they were they really just cooked it too hard into the side of the hangar there. But still, it does help. It does help if you try to tuck in the wings with a VTOL. It also gives you that extra upward lift. Doesn't matter too much in the C2, not yet currently. Maybe with master modes it will. But, you know, if you want to... Make that profile a little bit smaller. It helps. But yeah, goodness. Originally, I was only going to subtract a small amount of points, but that was some major collisions at the end there. And yeah, that was just complete early gear deployments, collisions all over the place, not even centered. Yeah, I'm going to have to give that a 4 out of 10. That was entertaining, but definitely not what we were looking for. That was, that was pretty rough. That was pretty rough. 
All right, we have the C2 again in that same hangar taking off. Looks like they have gotten themselves repaired finally, and they are facing the wrong direction, so you have to back out in order to get this to work. You could try to rotate within the hangar, but I do know hangars are a little bit skinny, so some ships, including the C2, it's not exactly the most viable way of doing it, so just backing out is perfectly fine. They have their gear up. I do like seeing that. Are they going to redeem themselves here? They should be... Oh, no, they... See, they clip the side of the wing on the hangar. This is why you want to use the VTOLs, folks. This is why the little the little VTOLs tuck in that way. It gives you just that little extra bit of room to maneuver. You can see those big thrusters firing there. Also, there's a bunch of sparks firing from the back. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, but yeah. Looking good, though. They lifted themselves up. They had their gear up. They just had no VTOL activation. Of course, they paid for it by smashing into the side of the hangar on their way out there. Overall, beautiful blue trails on their way out there. Yeah, that is just unfortunate. I was hoping they were going to redeem themselves there, and I had high hopes, especially when I saw the gear come up while they were in the hangar. But yeah, man, goodness. So they had a non-deployed VTOL set up there and an impact with the hangar. But the impact, I mean, is really just going to be the biggest point drainer there. So I'm going to have to give them a 6 out of 10 because they unfortunately smacked the side of the hangar there which is a no-go. Also, no VTOL deployment, which would have saved them there in that case. That honestly would have helped them there if they had used their VTOLs. They just didn't cause an impact with the hangar, and unfortunately, that ruins that score for them. So I'm just going to have to give them a 6 out of 10, which is just above mediocre, because it was good. They they had lift the gear up in the hangar, which is what we want to see, but everything else was just not as good. It was just subpar at that point. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate, folks. And again, like I said, you guys wanted me to grade a little bit harsher, so I'm grading a little bit harsher. And off they go into Quantum. I normally would probably give that maybe like a 7 out of 10 or whatever like that. Because overall they did everything right. Except VTOL activation and smashing the hangar. So subtracting big points for that. But ultimately I'm going to subtract one extra point. And just say it's a 6. Oh, the hangar's opening up again. Someone I guess is coming in for landing in this spot again. Let's see what we get. But yeah, that was, that was unfortunate. Yeah, I really wanted to see that C2 kind of redeem themselves there. They're just kind of... <laughs> just whatever it was, just like they're trying to get out of the hangar super fast. See, this is what happens when you become impatient, folks. Yeah, I'm just kind of scanning around to see if whoever this new customer is. But yeah, try not to be impatient, folks. Uh, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, right? Always make sure you maintain full control. If you end up hesitating a little bit because you overcook something or you undercook your throttle a little bit and you're trying to kind of recenter, that's perfectly well and good. But the most important factor of safety is you want to make sure that you're coming in slow and smooth and controlled. Even if you're coming in super, super slow, but you do everything that I lined out, right? You come in with VTOL activation if you have any, and you put your gear down right before you touch down, and everything was super smooth. Even if you did it all at a snail's pace, I would still give you it a 10 out of 10 because it looks good when you're coming in. Some people would like to do this as fast as possible, and while that does look really good and very cinematic, ultimately what I want to make sure is that everybody has the fundamentals for those cinematic landings down, and if you don't have those down for whatever reason... Yeah, I'm going to take points away. That's just the way it is. Not seeing whoever this new person... Oh, never mind. I spoke too soon. Here we go. We have what appears to be an A2 coming in for landing. A friendly A2 coming in to land. It looks like they have a little bit of damage on their top side there. Also, they are upside down, so they're going to have to rotate here. Going to have to give a little bit of roll. There we go. Yeah, definitely seeing some damage. Now, that could just be cosmetic damage, like as the ship spawns that way. Or that could actually be combat damage. We don't know. Ah, look at that VTOL activation. Although, I heard the gear deploy there. That's a little bit of an early gear deployment. I would like to see it as soon as you're approaching the air shield or when you get past the air shield. Also some hesitation here as they're just kind of floating in the air. There we go. Now they're moving once again. Could be they're trying to go into third person and kind of rejig themselves. You can see the feet there of the landing gear. And uh, yeah, so they're kind of trying to get themselves in position. Looks good, looking solid. Now they're going to bring themselves down. No, too much forward momentum. Ooh, okay. Looking good. They kind of tried to arrest that forward momentum. Remember if you're in a type of Hercules, any variant. You don't want to have too much forward momentum. Too much forward momentum as you're coming down and touching down will cause that front nose to pancake into the actual ground as you hit. So you want to make sure that you're just coming straight down as much as you possibly can so that the nose doesn't offset as you're landing. Overall, very solid. I love the VTOL deployments. A little bit of hesitation as they came in, probably because they were messing with third person camera. And then there's a bit of early gear deployments. So overall, very, very solid. I would give that about a seven. Uh, I could give them an 8, but I'm going to get stick with a 7. They were centered there, which would give them more points as well, too. But I'm going to say that's a that's a solid 7. That's a really, really good one. Just some stuff we're missing there. Okay, what do we got here? Some type of Mustang taking off from one of the smaller hangers here. It looks like a Mustang Alpha. Just a bone stock Alpha taking off here. Looking good. 
up in the air. Are you going to raise your landing gear, good sir? Raise your landing. Yes, there we go. Raising the landing gear. Now all you do is you just push out. Just push on out. Some hesitation there. Mm, don't like the hesitation. That's unfortunate. Yeah, you see, you want it. And then they stop probably because they're going to mess with their Moby Glass. Ah, come on, folks. Come on. You can do your Moby Glass assignments in the hangar. The only time that doesn't really work is if you're on a terrestrial planet uh, landing site. If you try to put your whatever coordinates you want in the current star map right now while you're on planet, 90% of the time it's just not going to work. And the reason why is because the game can't, like, if, for example, if it's trying to go somewhere uh, on the other side of the planet or whatever, or to another planet, the actual calculations that are done through the star map, it just can't do it, so it won't set the route. So you have to go out into space. In this case here, because you're in Grimhex in space, you can set it right from the hangar. So there's no point in hesitating right there. You could just do it right in the hangar and then immediately go and about your business. Look how fast that thing is. Mustang is so fun. Mustang is such a cool ship. I do have a Gamma. I do love that ship. It is so much fun. Although, uh, for a light fighter, as small it is, how fast it is, it is, it does feel heavier than you actually think it was, especially the Delta. It does feel a little bit chunkier. I don't know what it is. I think they have retuned it recently. Look at those trails as he goes through the asteroid field. It looks really nice. But yeah, overall, really, really, really good. All the steps were there. It's just there was some hesitation. Uh, oh, look at this. Someone just snuck right past me. We got a vulture sneaking past me as he skids off the, uh, hanger with his gear to blow me down also missing a right engine there so at some point this person lost an engine repaired the ship and currently there's still a bug in game right now where if you lose weapons or engines and you repair it it will show that the actual for in this case the engine housing is there uh, but the engine doesn't actually exist and it does not provide thrust either it just doesn't exist it just gives you the housing and if you lose different types of weapons or whatever and you try to repair the game doesn't give you the weapons back either. It's a bug. It's not intentional. That's not how it's supposed to be. In the future, that might be a thing. But currently, right now, that is not intentional whatsoever. Uh, yeah, so for that Mustang Alpha, I will give them a solid... Oh, that hesitation is really the only big thing. I'll give them an 8. And then for that Vulture, unfortunately, I didn't see the entire sequence there. Although they were a little bit uh, early on that pad there. If I were to give them a rating, it would be about a 7. Pretty good, but a little bit messed up there on that landing. And probably early gear deployment as well. All right, right, small hangar opening up here. What have we got? Someone taking off or someone landing? Can't quite see fully into it. It might be someone coming in for landing here. And indeed, it does look like someone is coming in for landing here. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Avenger Titan, a badly damaged Avenger Titan coming in, missing that left wing. Wow. So this person probably saw either some heavy combat or lost that wing in a collision. Something happened there and it completely destroyed that left side. So it looks like they're coming in now for landing and repair. Excellent centered touchdown, really nice and controlled. The only thing I would say about that is that they had a little bit too early of a gear deployment for my taste. Overall, though, really, really solid there. I would give them a 9 out of 10. That is exactly what we're looking for right there, folks. Solid, controlled, just everything you want to see. The only thing was the gear was a little bit too early for my taste there. Of course, everybody has their own preferences, but we are grading on that scale as is. All right, what do we got here? We have that Vulture earlier taking off now. You can see that right side engine there is not a glow. Those retros aren't even actually functional. They, they don't exist. You have the housing there, but they don't work. I've tested this myself. Yeah, that engine does not exist. It just has the housing, but it doesn't provide thrust. So the ship will feel a lot more sluggish. Now, this person is lifted up, which is good. And they have their gear up. Unfortunately, you can see, I don't know if you can see, it's right in the center of the screen there. They have their left arm lift up in the air. And that's because they are messing with their Moby glass right now currently. Which does mean I will subtract points for hesitation within the hangar. Again, folks, you can assign your route within the hangar, especially at Grimhex. You don't need to wait for too long. You don't need to get out of the hangar. You don't need to lift up or whatever. You can do it right while you're landed. It will definitely let you do it. The only time it doesn't really work is on planetary locations. And that's just because you're too close to the actual planet itself. And the star map, the old star map, the one that we're using now, it hates it. So, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this hesitation is going to be something I'm going to ding points for. But yeah, I hope CAG can fix that issue of missing components and missing engines. Uh, it's really, really annoying because the only problem, the only way you can fix this problem with this Vulture, because it's going to be a lot more sluggish at flying because of the way the repair system works now, is to just claim it. That's the only thing you can do right now. Off they go. No VTOL activation there. The little panels that are right next to the pilot cockpit there are not lifted up so this person did not use VTOLs so we had lack of VTOLs and we had a hesitation in the hangar I will say that is overall very cool but just not cinematic enough there's a little bit of hesitation there so we will give them 
I'll give him a solid 7. It was good, but uh, yeah, it could be better. Could be a lot better. Not really mediocre. Definitely has all the parts that we're looking for. Just not good enough. Not good enough, folks. Oh, what do we got here? Another small hangar opening up. So we have somebody coming in for landing. What have we got here? Oh, got a light coming at us. Who is it? What do we got here? We have what appears to be an Ares Inferno coming in for landing. See how well they do. Ares Inferno is always a crowd pleaser with that size 7 Gatling gun. Let's see. Lining things up looking good. Early gear deployment. Nope, nope. Don't like seeing that. Minor hesitation. Nothing to write home about, though. Over the pad, looking good. Now they're going to bring it down nice and smooth. And it looks good. Oh, auto land. That's definitely auto land. Ah, unfortunate. I was really only going to ding them for the early gear deployment, but then they decided to use auto land, and I will ding for auto land. Of course, folks, if you like auto land, it's perfectly fine. But for what we're looking for here today, I will be dinging points for that. Yeah, and I'm going to give them a solid seven as well, just for that early gear deployment. There was some minor hesitation, but it wasn't enough for really for me to dislike it. It's mainly that auto land, so I'm going to subtract points for that. All right, let's uh, wait for the next customer, shall we? All right, looks like that Inferno is ready to go back about its business, probably trying to rearm its Gatling gun there. Now it is lifted up off the pad. Come on, lift the gear up. Lift the gear up. Come on, buddy. Come on, you're missing a crucial step. You can redeem yourself here. Nope, they just said, uh, no, nope, don't care. <laughs> They're just going to back out of the hangar. What's nice with the Inferno is you can rotate all the way around. So if you don't like backing out of the hangars, you could always just rotate fully and make your way out. It's not that hard. But yeah, that gear uh, retraction, that late gear retraction, you're going to have to subtract points for it. Uh, I'm not going to give them too much for the hesitation because they were lifting up and they were going backwards overall. Relatively solid, but that, that gear, hmm. always going to ding people for that gear. So overall, I will say that is going to be probably a... Hmm, well, for one, it's going to be a seven overall because, again, late gear retraction. And you can see there they were checking their Moby Glass. So they're now blocking the actual entryways for the hangers there. And that's a no, no in my book. So that is also going to be a subtraction of points there. So overall, like I said, a seven as they make their way out. Do they still have the gear down? Because if they still have the gear down at this point, I'm just going to take another point away, honestly. <laughs> uh, it doesn't look like it. I could hear something in my, in my left ear powering up so i think we have another ship that may be leaving here shortly and off they go yeah no gear was down so they did eventually retract it that's nice um so yeah let's go ahead and shift our view on over oh what do we got here avenger titan gear already up and away they go beautiful look at that folks oh it's the damaged titan from before uh i guess he just didn't bother to repair <laughs> it's just uh he's like eh. I, he's like you know he likes it. it it adds character right it adds character to his tight look at this he just <laughs> just swinging wildly everywhere that is good though that is a awesome takeoff there they already had well, as soon as i looked over the gear was already up and they were away no hesitation whatsoever that is a 10 out of 10 takeoff folks that's all it takes for a 10 out of 10 oh what do we got here big hangar opening up and we have maybe that a2 from prior taking off here let's see what we got not quite certain if they are not up yet so they're still on the deck I may have to shift the view here a little bit, although I don't want to get in their way. I don't want to uh, get smushed by a passing ship trying to leave here, especially one of the bigger ships here. They are up in the air now, and I'm tempted to go down further because I can't see a VTOL activation in gear or up or down here. Let's see. Gear is actually up. VTOL activation on as well, too. I could see the gear was up. VTOL activation was up, and away they go, and then they turn off VTOLs. That's exactly what you want to see from a big ship. In this case, a Hercules AT folk. Oh, excuse me, A2, folks. I'm tripping all over my words. I'm just stunned by this takeoff here. That is a beautiful 10 out of 10 takeoff right there from this A2 owner. Lift up, gear up, VTOL activation on, and then away you go. No hesitation whatsoever, and go about your business, go about your day. Thank you, kind sir. Enjoy your travels, bombing whoever it is. Maybe I jumped town or something. I have no idea what's going on right now, but either way, thank you for that stellar takeoff. All right, let's wait for the next customer, shall we? Okay, small right side hangar opening up here. What have we got? I don't see anything yet. Could be somebody coming in for landing here. Let's just check around. Do we have anybody? Ah, Creamsicle Freelancer Max coming in for landing here. I don't see too many of them, at least out here at Grimhex. Let's see how they do. Coming in, coming in hot. 
Let's see how they're doing. I love that speed. Is it coming in nice and controlled? No gear down yet. That's exactly what you want to see, folks. Now they're slowing down, which is perfectly fine. Gear deployment past the air shield. Probably a little bit too early. I would like to see it a little bit later, especially right as they're over the pad. But that does look good. Look at that smooth. Oh, butter it. Butter it. Butter it. Ah, beautiful. That's what you want to see, folks. Overall, I will ding them slightly for being slightly early on that gear deployment through that air shield. So that's going to be a 9 out of 10. Not quite a 10 out of 10, but very, very close. Love that. Awesome. That creamsicle freelancer is easy to spot anywhere. You can see that orange and white livery anywhere with those giant engines in the back. I've been thinking about getting a Max myself, actually. But uh, I have a raft, and I really don't have any other reason to get a Max other than just having the extra capacity. But overall, I mean, it's a freelancer. Freelancer Max. It's a really nice ship. Let me know if you guys have one. How do you enjoy it? Maybe I'll, I'll do a review. Maybe I'll pick up one uh, maybe during uh, one of the events coming up. And uh, I'll do a review on the freelancers or something like that. But yeah, let's go ahead and move on. Actually, you know what? Looking at the time here, this is probably a good place to wrap up. So I got one thing I want to talk with you all about. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I wanted to go ahead and demonstrate accelerated limited landings. We've talked about in the past using decoupled vector landings and the standard limiter landings. But I want to talk about acceleration limited landings uh, because that is a different technique for landing. Thank you to the Huntress on my Discord for pointing that out. Uh, I just keep forgetting to bring it up overall. I wanted to talk about this at some point. It's not my preferred method of landing, but it might be for you. So I do want to demonstrate acceleration limited landings here. And uh, we'll go ahead and pop into first person here momentarily. And uh, let's see. So we have what is our standard limiter. Our speed limiter right we use i use this quite often for my own personal landings and it's great for when you're in coupled flight then we also have decoupled mode right so if i decouple you'll see my tvi there starts to drop and my ship is dropping like a rock and if you engage your gear you can vector lock yourself as you're landing we've talked about that previously on the show uh, but we're going to talk about today or at least in this part of the show is the throttle or acceleration limiter is also known as you can see this bar right next to the thr there and that little carrot is the limit if i pull that limiter down with either right alt and mouse wheel or in this case i have my right stick i have it bound to so i'm going to pull all the way down i'm going to start sinking like a rock and you actually can see i have no authority over my ship anymore at this point that's because my actual thrust output is completely limited and then i can just pop it back up and i have full control again so why would you use this method? This method can be useful for actually helping with your descent profile as you're coming in to kind of smooth things out. Now it can be a little bit tricky because if you pull it too hard back, you can end up sinking pretty fast. You have to be careful. So I'm going to limit myself as I come in. And then once I'm satisfied with my current vector, I'm going to start to drop my acceleration limiter. And you can see my vector is now dropping. Gear is going to come out. Now, if I need to raise back up, I can just bring the acceleration limiter back up again. And I can kind of get myself a little bit more power so I can raise myself back up again. It's quite simple, although there's a few moving parts that are involved. And if you're on mouse and keyboard, it could be a little bit tricky unless you have other... Uh, keys you have controlled or, or bound or if you have sticks or whatever it can be useful for that it's just again another method of landing i don't recommend it necessarily for rookies because there's a lot involved with it but some Thank people you. do enjoy the it because they feel like they have a lot more control let's go ahead and try it once more again this time i'm going to go a little bit slower so i can make it easier for you all to follow if you're a little Please bit newer at this so there we go we got our bay assigned and i'm going to wait for the hangar to open up right now because i don't want to get too close while the hangers ever goes so let's go ahead and move in and what i'm going to do is i'm going to just go ahead and slow my roll i'm going to come in nice and smooth and i'm going to make my way on over i'm going to bring my limiter down here just because i don't need all that extra speed or that room to basically jet my way out you can see i have my actual acceleration limiter set to about roughly below half right now i'm just kind of gliding in giving a just very light touch of forward throttle now my TVI is low, so at some point here, if I want to, I can just adjust by literally applying more forward thrust and you'll see the TVI is going to move forward. There it goes. And I can just ease my way in, just put it right on the dollar, gear down, and then I can just start decelerating and down we go. And you can do roller stops with it, just like with decoupled landing, or you can do just straight down. Let's go ahead and get out of here once more. Because we're going to do this with a vertical hanger off to the side over to our left here. And I'll show you guys how to utilize this with a vertical hanger. Because 
You actually want to make sure that you don't use the acceleration limiter until you're actually through the air shield. Otherwise, you'll find that your retro thrusters are just not that powerful at stopping you as you're nosing your way in. So you want to be sure that if you're going to descend, at least in the nose-in approach we've talked about before, you want to keep your acceleration limiter to the max. So let's go ahead and do the regular nose-in approach for the vertical hangar. So I'm going to get my TVI in. I got my limiter in a spot that I like. Once I've passed the air shield and I'm roughly in, and you can see that the pitch lighter is going to kind of bug out. Boop, there you go. I know through I'm through the actual air shield. I'm going to rotate, and then I'm going to start pulling that acceleration limiter down, and I'm going to start to sink. And if I need to slow down because I feel like I'm going too fast downwards, I just pull the acceleration limiter up. Gear is now down and touchdown. Very simple, very effective, and it just smooths things out. So if you are on a control scheme and you feel like it's just too sensitive, pulling that acceleration limiter can help you a little bit with that sensitivity issue if you feel like it's just a little touchy. Thank Especially you. if you're on keyboard and mouse. But like I said, again, the default keybind is right alt and mouse wheel. So that might, be, that might be a little bit tricky for some folks. But again, I'm just offering it here for you just as another tool in your tool belt if you decide that is the way to go. For many people, it's Coke and Pepsi. Other people, they just, they swear by it, right? So uh, one last time here for the books. So once again, I'm just coming in nice and smooth, slowing down. I'm gonna set my limiter to where I like it. I got now my acceleration limiter about halfway and I'm just gently just pushing my way in. Very light forward throttle. Waiting till my TVI is in a spot that I like. Looks good right there. I'm going to go ahead and gear down. Now I'm going to go ahead and back off the throttle and I'm just going to start to sink slowly. I bring up my acceleration limiter slightly if I want to slow down a little bit more if I feel like I'm just dropping like a rock too much. But yeah, it's, it's relatively straightforward, although if you're new to this, it probably doesn't seem like it. It really takes a lot of practice. Again, I have videos on my channel for how to do some smooth landings just using the normal limiter method. Once you feel more comfortable or you feel like you're more of an advanced flyer, you can definitely try this method out, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for new players. All right, folks, that's it for me today. I hope you did enjoy this video and found it informative as well as entertaining. If you did, please leave a like as it really does help out the channel. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this and much more down the line, be sure to subscribe as well. Until next time, fly safe, because you never know who will be watching you. And I'll see you all in the black.